This is Sergeant Beltfed, and we're playing some World of Warships. We're testing the uh, Ranger on the Special Aircraft Carrier test server. We're going to see how bad it can actually be. Here's the Ranger as she appears on test. She is pretty much exactly... Uh, the same as she is on live. I didn't notice too many differences. She is only tier 6. So I don't know what they're adjusting. I suspect the... Uh, I suspect the independence is going to go to tier 7. Because the independence is actually a newer ship. She's actually war built. Versus the ranger was a weird one-off pre-war carrier that wasn't particularly successful. Her air wing consists of some early war aircraft that were pretty much obsolete in the 19, like 1939 or so. Uh, the aircraft she starts with are even worse. She starts off with a bunch of biplanes. But we got SBT SB2U Devasta uh, Vindicators, TBD Devastators, and F4F Wildcats. Uh, the mix of early war and pre-war paint schemes are irritating. We have Air Groups Modification 1, which is a bonus to your returning speed of aircraft. Uh, we have no other options for helping your air wing, sadly enough. We can't even help our own AA. Uh, there are six aircraft per squadron. Size of attacking flight is two. So when you attack, two aircraft drop out of the squadron and make the attack. That aircraft can hangar. That's better to think of as spots uh, for spotting aircraft on the flight deck. Once you launch the aircraft, it will put two aircraft back in the squadron back on the flight deck till it refills the, uh, the squadron then you'll be ready to launch again. We have attack aircraft which are rockets uh, six rockets per plane, six planes we have standard torpedo bombers and we have HE dive bombers uh, consumables for the aircraft each flight has them. Patrol fighters. It's a lot like a float plane fighter or a catapult fighter. We have engine cooling one, which allows you to use your boost for longer. Uh, the way the consumables work, uh, the flight gets them for the entire match. So if you launch your fighters three times and you use your patrol fighters the first two times out, well, you will have no patrol fighters the third time you launch them. Uh, the ship itself, Damage Control Party 1, it has the Premium Damage Control Party available to it, Repair Party 1, and a Premium Repair Party available to it. That's pretty much all there is to say about her. Uh, other than that she is now Tier 6, she's pretty much the Ranger that we all know and hate off of life. There's not much to her, but uh, let's see how she actually plays. Battle starts. And here we are on the Ranger, on the test server, testing the CV rework. Launching some F4F Wildcats armed with rockets and we're gonna see what kind of chaos we can cause as compared to the zeros I was flying on the Ryojo the F4Fs carry more rockets but you get two fewer airplanes Uh, 
in total, the F4Fs actually have more rockets under the wing, as it were. So you get two fewer shots, but you do put a total of, what, 36 rockets to the Ryoja's 32 per sortie. Of course, they're no more user-friendly. Uh, they still have the same stupid line up, attack, and then attack again. One rocket for 627 damage. Yeah, the F-4Fs are better rocket-armed aircraft than the than the Zeros. You'll actually get some hits with them. Uh, less than 3,000 damage with uh, five rocket hits. Sending another flight. Yeah, the aircraft turn around quick enough that you can pretty much send a constant stream of aircraft. You don't actually have to swap between types. At least at the lower tiers when your flights are small. Gotta go make another pass. Ah, there's, there's the red dive bombers. You don't see much from him in this game, sadly enough. Uh, three more hits. So we're up to nine rockets for the first three and a half minutes of the game. So three and a half minutes worth of work for less than 4,000 damage. See if we can cause more. Fly through a whole bunch of flak. Almost dead destroyer. 481 health left. Bunch of rockets. Got a hit for, what, no damage? Minimal damage. And there there go all the airplanes. So let's get some dive bombers. SBT SB2U Vindicators. Uh, these things are obsolete before World War II. And these are the Rangers top dive bombers. I find the uh, the pre-war paint schemes kind of irritating with the early wartime scheme F4Us. They should have either gone all uh, pre-war or make them all early wartime. Yeah, these aircraft were, what, out of service by Midway? So let's go see if we can find something to drop our bombs. Uh, these are AG dive bombers. They use the same attack technique as the rocket planes. So you line up, you attack, and then you line up and attack again to actually release. Maybe, uh, yeah, let's go after that Fusa. Let's 
see if we can get a hit here. And we start out a fire. Nice. Let's see if we can hit him again. Of course, he's tearing the airplanes up. And here we go. Two more bombs. That actually looked like a decent amount of damage for HE bombs. It's kind of surprising. Here we go. And two more hits for, like, decent damage. It's kind of surprising. Here's another flight of dive bombers. Uh, at least they have bombs under them nowadays. Let's see if we can find something to bomb. Let's see, there's a New Mexico. Yeah, the airplanes, once they start dropping, once you go from the initial, here I've lined up and attacked, to I'm going to have to line up and make my second attack. At that point, you're fighting with the controls. So it's like an irritating mini-game trying to get your bombs to line up. And let's see, and let's see. That's lined up reasonable. All bombs in the water. Because, well, RNG. You go through all that work, and you get nothing. So we've hit with 14 weapons in the first 9 minutes and 30 seconds or so. Here's, a, here's some more dive bombers. And those go in the water. So let's see, we can't hit a battleship. So let's go try to hit a destroyer. Who knows, maybe that was uh, R and Jesus' way of telling us that uh, we weren't supposed to be bombing battleships today. Or maybe we're not supposed to be bombing Americans. I'm not certain which. And line it up. And this is going to go in right behind him. Well, that sucked. So here's the only aircraft in uh, the test that actually works well. Or works well enough. I won't say well. Uh, here's some TBD uh, Devastators. Flying Coffins. Another aircraft that was obsolete before World War II. Let's hit the speed boost and uh, see if we can actually get to that New Mexico and hit him. Yeah, as far as an aircraft carrier is concerned, uh, destroyers are essentially indestructible. Yeah, you're not actually going to hurt them. I can actually see the drop line this time. Of course, he turns into the torpedo to stop it from arming. If you drop too far back, uh, they'll just evade you. 
if you drop uh, too close, they'll just turn into you. I mean, the torpedoes will be harmless. So let's go make another run. In theory, he's turning away. And he won't be able to shift his rudder in time. So these torpedoes are a little faster than the ones on live, but they're dropped much further back. And it's two hits. So it's annoying because they are only slightly faster than the torpedoes on live, but you're dropping them about... I'm guessing twice as far back. I think these torpedoes are 40-something knots. Which is pretty good, but... At least it feels like you're dropping them a mile away. And here goes another flight of Devastators. Uh... Looks like somebody's killed the pesky destroyer. Of course, we did cause flooding on the New Mexico. And he flooded out. So here we are, 12 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. Less than 50,000 uh, damage to our name. And we have nine rocket hits, five bombs, and four torpedoes for all of our hard work. Uh, these things are not satisfying to drive. Uh, we have one kill. We spotted ten ships. Which, if you ask the uh, DD players, that's probably ten ships too many. We're looking for a carrier to blow up, because that's all that's left to blow up. Autopilot mode enabled. Yeah, and, uh, crap. I probably need to actually hold shift to make waypoints. So here we're looking for things to blow up. And there's a ranger. I think this guy is rage quit. Or he just parked there and turned his AA off for some reason. Because while I make these passes, there is no AA coming off his ship. So I don't know what's going on. I was under the assumption that if a player was AFK and their AA was at least turned on, it would still work. So... I really do not know. But hey, I'll take the opportunity to drop some torpedoes. Yeah. From this angle, uh, the torpedo indicator is not hard to see. So we're going to turn away. Got two hits and broke something. I'm not certain when it broke. Yeah, the, the two stage attack does work for the torpedo bombers. Because you attack, the airplanes drop down, and then you line up for another attack. You line up to launch your actual attack, and then the next time you hit the fire button, it releases the weapons. As you can see, the torpedoes spread out a little as they go. And we did not get the kill. Here we go at the end of the match. When it's all said and done, did just under 80,000 damage. A good chunk of that was against a stationary AFK or otherwise inactive ranger. Uh, eight torpedo hits, several of which were against an AFK stationary ranger. 
uh, five bomb hits, uh, one ship sunk, nine rockets, spotted 11 ships, set one fire, it broke three things, and caused two floodings. Only thing to note on the teams, uh, we got outscored by a bot Fuso. You'll notice not many aircraft were shot down on either side. I find that kind of surprising. And I noticed that their Ranger is at the bottom of their team with 24 points. So I don't, I really do not know what was going on there. And here we are with the details. The important stuff here. Uh, we hit with five bombs out of 12 dropped. It's not a bad ratio. That's just very, very few bombs. Uh, we hit with eight torpedoes out of 10 dropped. That's very good, except we only dropped 10 torpedoes. And we hit with nine rockets out of 60 fired. As you notice, the rockets do very little damage. They're averaging less than 500 points a go. Uh, torpedoes, that's what, 5,000, it's like, it's what, five, 6,000 points of damage per torpedo. I'm not certain what a normal torpedo does, but for the number of them we actually can get hits with, that's pretty low. And the bombs, well, they're right around 3,000 points of damage per bomb hit. So very low damage totals, uh, at least from the weapons themselves. Uh, fires, one for 4,000. Floodings, two for almost eight. Uh, only lost three aircraft of our own, which kind of sounds strange because I think there were more aircraft shot down. Wait a second. Let's see how that works. Yep. In fact, uh, in fact, the other team only did shoot down three airplanes. Seemed like more than that. I guess a lot, a lot of that was aircraft getting shot up and then auto-returning to base, at which point I guess they don't count. Here's the useless credit screen. The way the carrier rework actually worked, it cost 5 million credits to run an aircraft carrier for a match. If you ran a normal surface ship and got at least 500 XP in a match, if I, for every 500 base XP you got, it would then turn around and give you 5 million credits. That was some attempt to uh, make sure there were at least some players in the ships. Uh, there were nowhere near enough players, and when you've got that many bots driving around, and I guarantee you the bots aren't optimized for this. They start doing weird and interesting things. Uh, frequently you'd see log jams of bot destroyers just sort of all mashed into a single point, either on the northern edge or the southern edge of a cap circle, trying to cap. And they would turn themselves pink and actually sink each other. All the while being essentially immune to airplanes because they're... Uh, AA scales bizarrely. You could have a massive battleship or a cruiser with good AA, and you laugh at it. You take three destroyers with whatever AA and American destroyers, which, okay, not bad for a destroyer. It's still a destroyer. But you have three destroyers sitting there, and they'll just murder your airplanes. Like, three destroyers, uh, we're immune to everything over top of us. Uh, didn't get demonstrated here, but Rockets can be shot into smoke fairly easily. And they're actually pretty good at hitting destroyers in smoke. Uh, big problem with the rockets are 
they don't actually damage anything. Uh, the damage on a rocket is horrible. <laughs> it's almost pointless to shoot them. I'm not entirely certain what they're for. If you look at the tooltips, it says they're useful against aircraft. In this, they're not. So, they've got a lot of work to go. Uh, if they want this to be intuitive and user-friendly, they need to take the rocket aircraft and the dive bombers and make them point-and-click weapons. Put the reticle out there, make them like first-person shooter style. So you make radical maneuvers, the radical gets big. You do gentle maneuvers, the radical gets small. And when you pull the trigger, they release their weapons. Uh, the two-stage attack, the aim, attack. Now I have to re-aim again and make another attack. It just doesn't work. It's not intuitive. They're going to lose more players than they're going to gain from this. Uh, so the torpedo bombers, it actually works for. I wish the torpedoes, uh, the torpedo bombers were easier to actually aim. They'll probably have to put the, uh, they'll probably eventually have to put the aiming aid from the destroyers in them and let you pick a target. Uh, didn't really get to show it here, but the anti aircraft, I could not find any correlation between what you were doing. And what the end results were. I took the AOBA out and the Pensacola and adjusted my AA from left to right. So, and between having my AA to the correct side that the aircraft were on and hitting the defensive fire cooldown, it didn't appear to do anything. <laughs> it did not result in airplanes getting shot down, from what I could tell. You still, once in a blue moon, did a little bit of damage to the airplanes and the airplanes sort of ignored you. Uh, bots, on the other hand, a, the AA is vicious. So the bots are obliterating you with AA. The players aren't. So that was hard to test. Didn't test very well at all. Because A, there's too many bots. And B, I'm not certain if the AA was working properly to begin with. Well, that's what the uh, that's what happened on the test. So, see you on the next one.